Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And it's such a blessing today to always be in the house of the Lord. It is such a blessing to always praise him and magnify him and glorify his holy name. Yes, it is. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Glory, hallelujah. And I am so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. And I'm so happy, so blessed, so amazed to fellowship with all my sisters and brothers around the world, around the globe, around the universe today. And I want to welcome everyone to the Lord Take Over Ministry. All my brothers, all my sisters, and all newcomers. This is where we are saving souls. And I believe today that someone will give their life over to Christ today. I don't know who he is. I don't know who she is. But I believe in my heart of heart, and I'm standing on faith that someone will give their life over to Christ today. And God will get all the glory for it. The angels are rejoicing in heaven right now today. Because someone is saying, I surrender. God, I'm giving my life over to you today. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of skipping. I'm tired of not doing what you told me to do. Today is the day that I'm giving up. And I want to say congratulations to you today, my brothers and sisters. Because when you give your life over to Christ, you will become a new creation. And God will do amazing things in your life. I'm telling my sisters, I'm telling my brothers, I didn't realize it until I gave my life over to Christ. When I gave my life over to him, man, I just started seeing what God was doing for me. And it was such a blessing. I've been running for a long time. I was hiding for a long time. I was skipping and jumping and hopping for a long time. Until it came to that point when I knew I had enough. And I gave my life over to Christ. Everything. Everything. God has said that he was going to do. He has been doing it. Because his word said he is not a man. His word said he is not a man. That he should not lie. That he stand on his words. That he stand on his promises. Each and every day. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you're in love with Jesus. Like you say that you're in love with Jesus. Open up your mouth right now today. And give Jesus some thanks. And give Jesus some praise. And give Jesus some glory. In the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me. <clears throat> Lord Jesus. I come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, Father God, for this word that we better receive. I thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this powerful message, God, that we're going to keep us full and satisfied throughout the whole day. Father God, there's no place that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house, seeking you, praising you, glorify you, and magnify shall not your holy name, because God, we know that you are still on the throne. Oh God, we know that you're still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. We know that you're still in the healing business. We know that you're still in the blessing business. Oh God, you continue to watch over your children today. Oh God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, cannot be bothered or shaken by nothing or anyone. Oh God, we just give you thanks right now. Oh God, we give you the praise right now. Oh God, we give you the glory right now. Oh God, you know we can't do this by ourselves. So God, we, we are counting on you. God, we are depending on you. God, we are relying on you. Father God, you know what your daughters pray to you about today. Father God, you know what your sons pray to you about today. Father God, you even know what I pray to you about today. And even though, God, you didn't answer, God, but we know that you was listening. Oh, God, we know that you heard us, God. And God, we know that you're going to answer us on your time. Because your time is a perfect time. But until the minute, until we see anything happening, we're going to continue to thank you, Jesus. 
We're going to continue to praise you, Jesus. We're going to continue to glorify and magnify so that your holy name every day, Jesus. Because we serve an awesome God. Yes, we do. We serve a mighty God. Yes, we do. We serve a powerful God. Yes, we do. We serve an on-time God. You are a healer, Jesus. You are a deliverer, Jesus. You are a provider, Jesus. You are Jehovah Jared, Jehovah, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah El Shaddai. Thank you, Jesus. Our provider. It ain't over until you say that it's over, God. But to the midst of that, Jesus, we're going to continue to seek you. We're going to continue to put our faith and our trust and our hope into you every day, Jesus. We're going to continue to get on our knees and pray. We're going to continue to open up our Bibles and read a word. Oh, God, you touch your sons right now. You know what he's going through right now. Oh, God, you touch your daughters right now. You know what she's going through. Oh, God, you touch me right now. You know exactly what I'm going through. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, just move through this YouTube channel right now. Holy Spirit, move through this platform right now. Father God, let your presence move through this place. Let your love navigate through this place. Oh God, you lift us up right now. Oh God, we know it's not too hard for you. Oh God, we know it's not too difficult for you. Oh God, we know it's nothing that you can't do. God, we're going to continue to thank you. No matter what. We're going to continue to pick up our crosses and follow you no matter what. And God, we know that you're about to move in this place. Oh God, we know that you're about to do a new thing in this place. Oh God, we know that you're about to show up and show out in this place. Oh God, we know that you're about to speak to somebody in this place. Oh God, we know that your word is about to move to somebody in this place. Oh yes, it is, Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we thank you. And it's such a blessing today to be in the house of the Lord. It is such a blessing to praise and worship you. It is such a blessing, God, to magnify your holy name. And Father God, we're here today to let you know that we are available for praise. That we are available for service. That we are available for the kingdom. That we are available right now today for us to continue to do our Father's will. That we are available to serve you and magnify you. That we are available, Jesus, to always put you first place. Father God, please forgive me and my brothers and my sisters for our sins today. Please forgive us for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our eye, I mean had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me and my brothers and my sisters for everything and anything that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us, God, for anything we've done wrong today, God. Please forgive us. Wash us clean today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Cleanse us through, through the Holy Spirit right now. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a second chance. Thank you, Father God, for giving us an opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a clean new slate. And Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just 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 can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why God that's why I magnify. That's why I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart into you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen, but let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. Amen? Amen. Can I talk to my brothers and my sisters today, if that's okay? But I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to be honest with you. This word, this sermon, is not for everybody. I said this word, this sermon, is not. For every 
everybody. Because everybody don't want nothing out of life. But where they when there is a struggle, there's process. Where there is a struggle, there is a process, and in that process, there is a conversation. So how bad do you want what you're wanting from Jesus, my brothers and my sisters? Somebody's wanting something bad. So whatever you're wanting, it is a struggle because someone is struggling. And whatever it is that you are struggling for, there's a process in between that struggle. But in between that struggle and that process, there's also a conversation. And in that conversation, Jesus is asking his sons and his daughters right now, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? And I know right now today, a lot of us right now today, We've been struggling for a long time. And in that struggle, you might not see anything. In that struggle, you might not even know there's something now. But you're, you're not struggling just to be struggling, my sister. Oh, help me, Jesus. You are not struggling just to be struggling. Whatever it is that you are struggling for, there's a process in that struggle. And in that process, God has already ordered steps. That's why you are struggling. Someone wants that job so bad, so you are struggling. But in that struggle for that job, there's a process. Within that process, there's a conversation. Somebody wants that, want that man or want their husband back. But in that struggle, there's a process. Within that process, there's a conversation. Somebody wants that woman. Somebody wants their wife back. But in but in the in that struggle, there's a process. In that process, there's a conversation. Somebody wants that business deal, but in that business deal, you're struggling for it because you got your faith into it. You're believing in it, and by your faith and your trust and your hope is in it, there's a process. In that process, there's a conversation. Somebody wants children so bad, but in the midst of you having children, you're struggling to have it. But in that struggle, that oh help me, Jesus, there's a process. And in that process, there are conversations. Someone want their ministry, their ministry deal so bad. But in the midst of you haven't seen that ministry deal yet, you're struggling for the ministry deal. But there's a process while you're struggling. And there's also conversation while you're struggling and through the process. How bad do you want it? Right now, I'm here today to let my sisters and my brothers know. You have the verge right now today that God is about to bless you because you've been, oh help, oh help me Jesus, that you've been holding on for quite some time. You have been struggling for quite some time. And I know it's been time that you want to give up. I know it's been time that you want to throw in the towel. But any time that you want to give up, any time you want to throw in the towel, any time that you want to say you're done with it, you are closer to, you are closer to your blessing and your breakthrough when you don't even realize, my brothers and my sisters. You are so close. But I'm here today to tell somebody, just hold on just a little bit more longer. Just to hold on just a little bit more tighter. Because you're already there. Victory is already yours. God's going to get some glory out of it. But God's going to share some of the victory with you because you struggle with him. You're not just struggling with anyone or anybody. You are struggling with God. And in that struggle, there is a process. And in that process, there are conversations. Where there is struggle, there are processes. And God is saying, how bad do you really want it? I know you're tired. I know you want to give up. I know it's been a long, long struggle, my sisters. I know it's been a long struggle, my brothers. I know. I've been struggling for quite some time, too. But in my struggle, I know there's a process. And in that process, I know there's a conversation. I've came too far to throw in the towel now. I've came too far just to walk away now. I have came too far just to say I'm done. I'm not leaving until I receive my blessing. Yes, we are out of breath. Yes, we are fatigued. Yes, we are drained. 
But wherever we are weak at, my sisters, wherever that we are weak at, my brothers, God will give us the strength to make us stronger because look who we are struggling with. Look who we are fighting against. He's holding us. He wants to see how bad he really wants. He is testing you, my sisters. That's where the process is coming in. But there's a struggle, there's the process. The process is the trust. The process is the hope. The process is saying, do you really believe me? I'm going to do it for you. So whenever there's a struggle, there's also a process. But in that process, he going to talk to you as well. He going to have a conversation with you. He going to tell you, let me go. But if he telling you, let you go, don't you dare let go. You got to say, nah, I can't have it like that. I can't let go until I get what's mine. I've came too far. I have struggled way too long. I have fought the good fight. Do you actually think I'm going to start right now? Oh, no. Nah. We might as well go for another round. Because I ain't stopping until I get what's really mine. Amen? Amen. So let's turn our Bibles to Genesis 32. And we're going to read verses 22 through 26. Genesis 32. And we're going to read verses 22 through 26. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> that night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maid servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrench. As he wrestled with the man, then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Do you see what the struggle was? God knew Jacob had enough faith. So he picked a wrestling match with Jacob. God knew that you had enough faith, my sisters. God knew that you had enough faith, my brothers. God knew that serving minister LT had enough faith. So what God did, he picked a wrestling match with you, my sisters and brothers, even myself. And as we was wrestling, they go to struggle. They go to struggle. He didn't pick a wrestling, a wrestling match with anybody. He only picked the match with some people who had faith. God noticed your faith, my sisters. God noticed your faith, my brothers. God even noticed my faith, just like he noticed Jacob's faith. And he said, I want to wrestle with that. I want to see what his faith is made of. I want to see what her faith is made of. I want to see what his faith is made of. I want to see what serving minister LT faith is made of. So he wrestled with us. And he still wrestled with us. In the midst of the wrestle, he come the process. He come the process. When the man saw, then he cannot overpower him. Why cannot God overpower Jacob? Because Jacob's faith was his, oh help me Jesus. Jacob's faith was his equal to God's faith. And we know God's a big man, a powerful man. But when God noticed that your faith is just as equal as his, he said, let me go until it's daybreak. But the moment when God told us to let us go, we told God, God, we can't let you go until you bless us. So when God realized that we weren't going to let him go, and he understood the answer no from my sisters. He understood the answer no from my brothers. He understood the answer no from me. He understood the answer no from Jacob. So what he had to do, he had to touch us in the area to hurt us. He got to hurt you before he bless you. I don't know where he had to hurt you at. 
But where he hurt you at, he didn't hurt you to destroy you. He hurt you to bless you just to see how bad you really want the blessing. He might have to hurt you in your finances just to see how bad you want the, the, um, the finances. He might have to hurt you in your marriage just to see how bad you want it. He had to hurt you in your dreams just to see how bad you really want it. He had to hurt you in your business opportunities just to see how bad you really want it. He had to hurt you in your ministry opportunities just to see how bad you really want it. So he had to hurt you somewhere because he wanted to see what you, oh, help me, Jesus. He wanted to see what you was made of. He want to know what you really about that life like you say that you was. He want to really see that you really want it as bad as you telling everybody that you want it. So you got no point to prove to God. You ain't got no point to prove nobody else because God want to see what you're made out of. But one thing I noticed, I believe that God already knew that you wanted. And the only reason why I noticed that because he would never pick the wrestling match with you in the first place. He would never have a struggle with you in the first place. He would never have told you to let me go in the first place. So that right there automatically tell me that God already know that you want it. But God is going to deliver on his time, not our time. But in the midst of our hurt, even though that we are limping when we rest with God. Even though we are limping. When we praying to God. Even though we are limping. When we reading our Bible with God. Even though we are limping. As we praise and worship to God. We still holding on to God. And we still telling God. Day in and day out. God we ain't letting you go into your blessings. So yes the struggle has been a long struggle. Yes the process. Has been a long process. But in the, in the, the midst of all that. Do you see how God had a conversation with Jacob. When God told Jacob let me go. The same conversation. That God had with Jacob. Was the same conversation. That God had with you my sister. Was the same conversation. That God had with you my brother. He said let me go. But we had enough faith like Jacob. And we told God to his face, that God, we ain't letting you go till you blessed us. Yes, we are hurting. Yes, we are suffering. Yes, we are still struggling. But God, there's no way, hallelujah, that we're going to let you go until we get what's rightfully ours. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who God is preaching to today. But I believe today my sisters is not letting God go until they receive that blessing. I believe today that my brothers is not letting God go until they receive their blessing. I'm not letting God go until I receive my blessing. We have came too far in our journey. We have came too far in our assignment. We have came too far in our mission. We have came too far in our struggle. We have came too far in our fight just to let you go right now. So right now, we are the point of our breakthrough. We are the point of our blessing. That's why you're so eagerly to give up and you and you want to throw in the towel because you're already there. You're already there. 27. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled. Look at that word. Because you have struggled. With God, my brothers and my sisters. So not only that you struggle with God, God has already given you a new name because of your struggle that you have with God. Whenever that you have a wrestling match with God and you struggle with God, God has already ordained a new name for you, my sisters. God has already ordained a new name for you, my brothers, because what did you do? You struggled with God. Who's struggling with God right now is the point I'm making. And if you are struggling with God, they mean that your blessing is on its way. If you are struggling with God, they mean that your breakthrough is on its way. If you are struggling with God, they mean that your miracles on its way. If you still struggling with God, they mean that your new name is on the way. Your more than enough is on the way. Your overflow is on the way. Open doors is on the way. Connection, resources, favor is on the way. Because you have struggled. With God. Hallelujah. Because you have struggled with God. 
and with men has overcome. You already overcame the pain. You have already overcame the suffering. You have already overcame the hurt. And yes, we're going to continue to have that limp. That limp is not going nowhere. That limp will always be there permanent for the rest of our life because we struggle with God. Jacob had that limp permanently for the rest of his life because he struggled with God. I don't mind limping when I'm praying. I don't mind limping when I'm praising. I don't mind limping when I'm seeking the Lord. I don't mind limping when I'm glorifying and I magnify His holy name because they show me that I struggle with God. And by the midst of me struggling with God, God had to hurt me before he had to bless me. God had to hurt you, my sisters, before he had to bless you. God had to hurt you, my brothers, before he had to bless you. God had to hurt Jacob before he had to bless him. Because why? You struggle with God. And where there's a struggle, there's a process. When there's a process, there's a conversation. So before I close tonight, how bad do you really want it, my sisters? How bad do you really want it, my brothers? Even though that you're still struggling right now. Even though that you're still hurting right now. Even though that you're still limping right now. How bad do you really want it? And I believe and I declare right now today that my sisters, they really want it bad. That's why they're still struggling. That's why they're still limping. I believe and I declare today that my brothers want it bad. That's why they're still struggling. That's why they're still limping. I believe and I declare today that servant minister LT wanted bad. That's why I'm still struggling. And that's why I'm still limping. And God, we ain't letting you go until you bless us. So if you want to go for another round, Jesus, here we go. We're going to go for another round. Limping, struggling, hurting, and all. So you might as well go ahead and bless us now because we ain't giving up. You might as well go ahead and bless us now. Because we ain't, we ain't putting our hand down. Your mouth was going to bless us now. Because we ain't turning our back. Your mouth was going to bless us now. Because we ain't going nowhere. Glory to God. We ain't going nowhere. If you know you ain't going nowhere. Tell Jesus right now. Jesus. You mouth will bless me right now. Because we ain't going nowhere. You might, as, you might as well bless us now. Because we are not going anywhere. And if you know God is talking to you. And you know that this word is for you. Give God some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is with us.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put your faith, your trust, and your hope in Jesus no matter what. Because we serve an awesome God, a mighty God, a powerful God. Always continue to put your faith in him. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Always choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It does not matter if you know them. It does not matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my fellow brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. This serving me to say, I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.